All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to New Dawn, a Final Fantasy XI podcast. Welcome to episode four. I am your host, Isilis. And I am Vaberbond. And we have a special, special guest here tonight, a community favorite, Mr. Rua Umoko. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Did I say the name right? I've been stressing for a week about this. <laughs> um, you kind of need um, a New Zealand accent to say it properly. Even then, I'm going to butcher it. <laughs> the indigenous, okay. In, the um, indigenous people call him Ramoko. Oh, God. I would have never gotten it. But I, I call myself Rua because it's much easier to understand. See, that's what I say <laughs> is I'm okay to call you Rua then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, happy New Year's, gentlemen. How you been? Uh, fine. Got over my um, extensive driving around and seeing family. <laughs> um, back to work tomorrow. But yeah, it was a, it was um, all things considered a good time. So, are you in New Zealand now? Yes, I am. I live on the northern tip of its South Island, a town called Blenheim. Okay, what's the? I mean, how long is uh, is the drive around the around the island or w for family there and back? Uh, one trip was two hours, and well, four if you count the return, and the other one was six. Okay. So I spent about about a day and a half, two days just driving. Oh. One of the cities was on Christchurch. That's been in the news for. for for a few bad reasons, <laughs> I won't go into them here. But oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hey man, it sounds like my high school. The only time it makes the news, it's either drugs or football. So at least it wasn't. <laughs> at least, at least it wasn't an earthquake. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Was was that the was that where the volcano was too? Uh no, nah, that was um, White Island. Oh okay. That's in the uh, that's in the uh, North Island. Yeah. The only real problem we've had lately is. The smoke from all those fires burning on Australia's east coast—they've actually gone. They've actually flown across the ditch. And oh yeah, I was gonna ask it's meant about to that. be. Yeah, it's meant to be the height of summer here, so we're looking at about. Of course, I'm using degrees um, Celsius. It's meant to be between 29 and 31 degrees Celsius. It's 20 out because wow. the sun is out. It's just smoke is just so thick. It's stopping the the um, sun from really heating anything up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at no, least that's, that's terrible. At, yeah, at least that's what the uh, current theory is. Yeah, the uh, I mean, I was looking at the numbers for the amount of animals that have been wiped out from that fire, and it is insane. So I don't I don't know what they're mm -hmm. going to do, but hopefully they're able to get that under control soon. But yeah, bad um, scenes. Bob, how did your uh, how did your night out? Uh, weren't you forced to go out on New Year or New Year's? Yeah, man. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to do anything, or I actually wasn't going to drink or do anything because I thought I had to work the next day, and then I end up, uh, I still stayed in, but I drank too much. I didn't even play the game. I was going to get on, and then I was like too many bourbons in, and bad things happen whenever I get online and play when I've drank too much, so people tend to die. So, um, You mean like our only kin wipe? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hey, kin wipes, those are still a thing. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember. I think I just went in and I don't, I honestly don't remember we what happened. We ended up killing it in the end, but it was, um, it was messy. Messy, <laughs> messy, messy. Uh, the instructions were, uh, everybody stay on the jobs you're already on. Keep in mind, I think, I don't know if we had a single sober person in the, uh, Discord at the time, but we, uh, <laughs> we killed it. Yeah. We killed it. And, um, I think at one point in time, does he have like, does he like spawn clones or was I just uh, drunk enough? I've uh, seen three of him. No, you were probably, yeah, you were, yeah, yeah. you were probably off your head. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, um, tonight uh, we're going to be talking about a few things, uh, but before we kind of get into it, um, everyone uh, head on over to www.newdawnls.com. Remember, we have that uh, link to our Discord there. So we'd love for you to join the community. Um, and then also, uh, if you hop on the website and you um, you end up uh, donating to the podcast, know that it's not to make a, a, a bunch of money. It's just to make sure that we can uh, make sure we publish each one of these uh, episodes. Uh, but last week, or sorry, last episode, we asked um, the question, uh, what is 
the best expansion uh, ever made on um, Final Fantasy XI. And uh, before I give that answer, uh, Rue, if, if you had to, off the top of your head, say it, what would it be? Uh, I would say Adeline. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The uh, the overwhelming was COP, um, but uh, and then obviously Wings of the Goddess was the least favored. But uh, yeah, no what, kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone picked Wings of the Goddess first, I just hate to say it to you. It's okay to be wrong though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think the only thing that it had for it was like I think there are some memorable cutscenes in it, but yeah, beyond that. Uh, what uh so what brings it home for adeline for you uh adeline was the best expansion for me because we'd just been putting up with void watch and a lack of distinct content for so long there was there was there was just a lot of uncertainty around people weren't sure if there was going to be another expansion final fantasy 14 had been made and then promptly crashed and burned <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. um yeah, and um, Adeline just gave, I think Adeline gave the development team a lot more room to move. It's like they had all of these ideas they wanted to implement, and with the introduction of item level, they yeah. could finally do. Yeah, it was just great. After, after, I think I think the game was kind of stagnating a bit, especially during the height of Void Watch. So that, so Adeline being released was just a big breath of fresh air. Yeah, cool. but uh, having item level because I didn't play really much during the Void Watch, so um, but I can imagine being you didn't stuck miss at much. It. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's okay. I don't. I really don't have a, an honest opinion on a whole lot of it because I didn't play it there from the middle of uh, Wings all the way until uh, about a year ago now, actually. Yeah, it's and, only been about seven and, months for me. Yeah. And to be fair, I think I think, and um, we talked about this before we actually started recording. If I I started playing at the um, uh, Treasures of Utter Gun release, so if I think if I'd been around when COP was actively being um, released, I think I would have probably changed my tune. But by the time I I actually started playing. Most people already completed COP, so it was just an unbelievable slog. I'm like, okay, the story is interesting, but damn, some of these fights are really hard. I mean, they the difficulty are. was, yeah, the difficulty was, um, it was good, but still, there's only there's only so many times you can lose the airship fighting. I'm like, oh come on, <laughs> yeah, everybody <laughs> oh, can go yeah. farm your uh, key items again. Yeah, I remember. I mean, I mean, you had to have a static to do missions. So, I mean, I remember I having to like plan out my weeks around being able to progress through the mission line. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was difficult. Yeah, there was a there was a couple of fights that could have been that. There, my favorite part of COP because that's my personal favorite because I've played I'd played since a uh, North American release, and uh, my favorite part of it was. You had so much variety you could use and still complete the missions. The only downside is, is you had to be like borderline. I'm not gonna say best in slot, but you had to be pretty decently geared for, you know, level 30 content, level 40 content, 50, 60, and uncapped, yeah. which was 75 at the time. And like, <clears throat> that, sometimes that meant having to go get archers' rings or having to go get snipers' rings and and then, like, uh, using uh, against the Tenzin fight, like, uh, doing a successful uh, fight on him, like, you needed multi you needed two sleepers. You wanted a bard and a black mage to be able to try and sleep those things in case one of them resisted. So that way you could just not have to deal with it. But once the <clears throat> content started becoming, like, more well-known, like, and all the different strategies like ranged burning or uh, just two hour warrior slamming some of them or stunning everything on blue mage with headbutt. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> I was getting ready to say, when, yeah, uh, I remember when headbutt was around. <laughs> oh, blue um, mage was amazing for everything that was not level 75. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd agree with that. The only use I ever saw blue mage. At 75 was doing sneak attack, chain affinity, cannonball. 
that was the only thing I remember from that period. Wow. <laughs> and then depending on what you were fighting, you either A, pulled hate and uh, promptly got uh, hit with something ra rowdy like a deadly hold or, um, I mean, long story short, either way, you ended up uh, eating dirt afterwards usually. Unless yeah. your tank was really on top of the ball. Yeah, so, yeah. that That's an interesting take, though. I guess um, with the Adulin, if you were uh, continue to play all the way up through Void Watch, I can see how that would be the best. But um, so, um, what, uh, so tell us a little bit about, I know we talked quite a bit before, but tell us just about yourself, um, like your history with the game. I know you just went, um, or you told us you just started with um, Treasures. Uh, treasures. Uh, are you from this server? Uh, no, originally I was from Bahamut. Actually, no. I, <laughs> going back, yeah, I have to go back even further because there was another server merge. Originally I was on Ramu before ah. that got merged into Bahamut, and then I came from Bahamut to Azura. So one server hop was voluntary, and the other one was I was a refugee. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Forced merge. <laughs> yeah, forced merge. So, uh, uh, were you uh, before everyone levels everything to ninety nine? What was uh, what was your career job? Career job. Um, first job I got to level seventy five was Corsair. Okay. And my was, man. Yeah, and back then it was a very different kettle of fish. Um. I had to level up several several crafts to make my own bullets because bullets used to cost the earth back then. Um, and from there, when Corsair was done, I leveled Dragoon from level 1 to 75 completely solo. There you go. We would have got along uh, back then. Yeah, as soon as I got the um, the um, artifact helmet, it was just so much easier. I just spent oh, yeah. 60 to 75 just murdering Calibri and Marsh Mores. Mm-hmm. And from there, what would I, what else would I follow Dragoon with? I then level Puppet Master from one to seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it, it's kind of weird. I've leveled so many jobs from one to seventy five, but of all the jobs, I never even touch Beastmaster is one of them. I mean, oh. I grand. I mean, I got it to ninety nine just from just by burning for a video, but I just never liked Beastmaster. Yeah, I don't it, know why. <laughs> it so. seems they, yeah, they seems they've turned it into like. Where Puppet Master used to be like not really talked about ever, or now Pup is amazing, and then Beastmaster kind of sits in the back and is like, mm, yeah, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so Beastmaster used to be uh, an amazing money manufacturing job, like, cause that's all you used to do with it. Like, anytime you, if you were soloing CP, you're making gil. If you were soloing any, like, you, you, all you did on Beastmaster was make gil, cause like I, I leveled yeah. it during the seventy-five days back during the mpk days and my uh in-game link shell uh depending on which link shell got the claim like if it was the uh i bought everything link shell we'd uh we'd be fighting them with monsters while they were fighting nidhogg or whatever you know i'm about to say i can just <laughs> i can just imagine all those times in dragon's airy just, oh. just making those skimmers those skimmers just force people to wipe <laughs> <laughs> yeah who claimed a darter? <laughs> and then uh, when they uh, changed how that worked, we used to try and uh, charm the skimmers and uh, force the uh, dragons to spin, <clears throat> which could force a spike flail. Yeah. Because, like, for God, whatever bro, are you reason, bully back in the day or what? I mean, that's just how in-game link shells were back in, in uh, <laughs> yeah. Z-Lar, Dragon... early Ch COP. Yeah, like, Dragon's you, you... Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, Dragon's Airy was pretty much King's Landing. It was <laughs> you, you just <laughs> you just you, you, you yeah you just weren't sure where the um, betrayal was going to come from. <laughs> it could be oh. someone claiming. It could be someone being played. Some someone being paid a lot of guilt to claim a to claim a fly. Someone who would call for help. <laughs> oh yeah, there was um, there was definitely some. Uh real vicious time spent during uh h&m windows <clears throat> so um have you always been active in the community because just looking at even your first video just like the way that your presentation is and how it's presented and how easy to understand and relatable it is um it just sounds like uh i don't know you were you were active then but have you always kind of tried to uh stay connected 
Uh, not really. Um, before I began my channel, I knew a sure. It was mostly knowledge I got from and then developed from some of my good friends in game, but it was largely kept in house, so to say. I was more active on the auction house forums and the Alla forums before that, before they went dead. Yeah. Um, that's something Man. I've shied away from for a while now. Um, well, I, I think do... the only people who use Alakazam anymore are trolls, so I mean, you're probably a good <laughs> way to do it. <laughs> Uh, some people would argue the auction house isn't any better on sometimes, but <laughs> I do get some input from people on those forums, the auction house forums. Like some of these people really know their stuff, even more so than me. Like Martel was really useful when I was doing Paladin's update video. And when I was doing Scholar's Guide, even I didn't know some of the stuff about it. So I was referring to information from Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, when um, I oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, when I eventually get around to doing other job guides, I will be consulting with more people on the forums to make sure I've got everything covered. I mean, people um, people contacted me through the through the auction house and PMs or Intel's in game whenever they had questions, even before my channel got going. But ever since I've started my channel, it's and it's picked up some traction. I've gotten noticeably a lot more attention. <laughs> Um, yeah. sometimes that's a good thing sometimes that's a bad thing like I'll be in the middle of an event and I'll just get like random tells coming out from nowhere I'm like uh, dude I don't want to sound rude but give me a moment <laughs> <laughs> me <laughs> oh, no. uh... so since you just uh, brought it up one thing I uh, one thing I really wanted to ask you about is how you honestly felt about the uh, paladin update because when I first was looking at it until they've fully put out that majesty was going to be a complete duration thing not just like a uh one you know one time use i actually i honestly thought like they were borderline making fun of people who were career paladins oh um oh yeah i absolutely stand with what i said in my last few videos when i talked about um i seriously like the update it got um you need to kind of look beyond I mean, Majesty is a really neat ability, and what it does is really great, but you need to look beyond what it just does to Paladin to understand why it's so important. To me, if Rune Fencer is meant to be a tank which can double as a, as a DPS, Paladin's a tank which now doubles as a healer. So, yeah, I've been using the Paladin and Dynamis Divergence, higher waves, and my opinion re remains unchanged. It's a really good healer. Now, do you think that uh, do you think that really helps paladins with uh, content like um, high tier, not high tier, um, uh, the master trials, where essentially you actually have to do damage to be able to maintain threat, or do you do you think that's just kind of, well, for lack of a better way to put it, like a band aid on a knife wound type deal? Well, the master trials I've done, I've done three of them. I've not done Aroha yet. Um, I've done Sealed Fate, Unafraid of the Dark, and the um, oh, Black and White, the Odin one. Um, Paladin is actually better on um, Black and White. I think for Unafraid of the Dark, Unafraid of the Dark, you don't even need a tank. Um, I five-manned Unafraid of the Dark the other day. <laughs> Um, was just kind of like helping someone get the win, and they weren't really geared up. We're like, you know what, sod it, we'll just go and throw a group together and get it done. Um, use the Warrior as a quote-unquote tank for that. Uh, sealed fate i tanked that on monk so master trials you only feasibly need a tank on one of them well two because i haven't like i said i haven't done the uh, aroha fight yet so i can't really comment on that but for any other content you can use paladin over over rune fencer it's just a matter of what of to me it boils down to what jobs you actually have available like if you're using a rune fencer as a tank, you 100% need to have a white mage in that in um, that party. If you have a paladin as a tank, you can use scholar or red mage, and all all of, all of the wondrous things they give in addition to having some kind of support cure or nah array spam. So, so yeah, no, it's so for just question on kind of like you know when you went to go make the paladin one. So is that how you kind of approach? Uh, a lot of the videos, are you reaching out and consulting or do you kind of have a, um, a structure that you have in place and then only if you can't answer something, you, you, you kind of reach out? Well, the funny thing about the, um, about the uh, Paladin video, Martel actually contacted me <laughs> ahead of time. Oh, okay. 
I was going to I was going to contact him anyway. But I'm like, oh hey, you've actually you've actually got to me first. He's like, look, I know that you, I know that you're probably going to be doing a video, and I just want to throw my um, throw some of my expertise in. I'm like, okay, fair enough. And yeah, he told me some things I legit didn't know about um, about how um, enmity generation is reduced when you've got multiple targets registered. I actually legit did not know that until he told me. I'm like, whoa, hang on, <laughs> that's actually a thing. Yeah, and he so- told me. So to clarify that one too, because I was actually listening to that one again recently. I don't know how I missed that part, but so you're saying like if um, like just the the enemies around you, if you if you touch or already have your your spells are going to do less enmity. Is that kind of yeah? Okay. Um, say for example, you are pulled a bunch of mobs. You've used Poisonger or Shockwave to register hate, and you start doing foil and all of your J. Now, the hate that that foil and your JAs are going to accumulate is divided between the number of targets you currently have hate on. The thing is, we've never really noticed this when we're AoE burning because blue mages and beastmasters tend to two-shot everything before it can really make a difference, and magic damage enmity is calculated differently. Okay. So that's kind of why we didn't even notice it. But mm. say like say like an omen where you're typically using DDs, like a, like a tank or mass pull everything and you just get hate eventually. I mean, okay, stuff in Omen tends to die in about right. two, three <laughs> weapon skills anyway. But you'll notice that you will, that, you, that you'll pull hate surprisingly easily. And especially in Dynamis Divergence. So, yeah, I did not know that was a thing. And Paladin getting a Banishka means it's no longer tied to a Blue Mage sub, actually generating AoE hate. And since you can cure across alliance, that was a real godsend on Majesty. Um, since you can actually cure across an alliance, you don't have to. You aren't limited by the HP of your party members because a tank party is usually kept at relatively high HP unless they're fighting something serious. But if you just say you like you, you use Banish Girl and everything, and then you just throw a Majesty cure onto the DD party that's at like half HP, yeah, you, you're fine. You're sorted. Interesting. So you, uh, so you're using Paladin mainly in uh, Dynamis now. Is that what you said? Um, the Link Shell I do Dynamis with. They, we typically have a Rune Fencer pull. He's pretty well known among the Link Shell members because he goes on these suicidal pulls, like kind of like the other day <laughs> in Dynamis Juno. You know? Yeah, and if he's if he's if he's listening to this, he knows exactly who he is. <laughs> um, <laughs> He'll like go and pull half the zone, and we're like, hey, "Hang on, we're still dealing with this." And us, and I'll see him out of out of the corner of my eye, running off towards the palace. I'm like, "Dude, no, <laughs> stop! What, <laughs> what are you doing?" And um, yeah, we typically yeah we typically use a rune fencer to to go and mass pull everything, okay. and the paladin paladin as the uh, as the camp tank. That way, if there's like a like if there's like a ninja that blows up and the healer dies, then we have someone on hand to just go. Oh shit! Emergency. Oh, sorry. Very <laughs> uh, no, good. Uh, oh, okay, cool. We actually have someone um, on hand to to um, well, if you if you excuse the pun, to cover <laughs> until, <laughs> until, until, until back up. Love oh, it. That's Love it. <laughs> I don't know if you've uh, listened to the rest of our episodes, but you can tell we definitely love good puns around here. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so do you think that the the way that they're approaching jobs now is to just attack each one and try to balance it, or do you think, like with the Paladin um, update, they're trying to just make a shift in the meta in the way that people look at the content that's already there? Um, what do you What do you think about that? I think they're doing a bit of both. I think with some of the jobs they've been patching, they've been very, very careful. Because if you ask me, the only job they fluffed up, or well, they kind of, they kind of made a mistake on, but in a good way, they've made is is well, red mage. That is just insanely powerful now. Um, for jobs like Monk, you'll notice they did it very they did it very um, piecemeal. Like they did one small update, then another small update, rather than drop everything at once because they would could, they could have very easily made it really really overpowered. Um, 
I think they're trying to bring back a semblance of balance to the, uh, especially as far as DPS jobs go. I mean, there's, I mean, as far as I see it, there's a reason you've not seen Warrior, Samurai, or even Rune Fencer get an update yet. Right. So I think that, yeah, because I think they know that those jobs are a bit too strong and they're waiting to see where the other jobs end up before they go and uh, they go and address those. Um, I think they're also, they might, they might be setting the groundwork for future battle content, which I think is going to be an expansion of the um, eye level, but we're probably getting ahead of ourselves here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah uh, I think That sounds like a great thing for the 20-year uh, 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 update they've been mentioning. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's going to be. I mean, it's entirely speculation at this point, but I think before that we are going to get Empyrean Reforged, and I think it's going to be through an updated version of Limbus. That's oh, like the only CO. That's like that's like the only COP end game I ever did. You think they're going to utilize uh, Limbus for the Empyrean? Yeah, I do. I think it's going to be Limbus. I yeah. actually think that'd be an amazing idea. I remember, I remember the hundreds of hours of absolute nightmares of doing that when it was still current content. Well, these are lizards. They're weak to slashing. Well, these ones are weak to piercing. Dog, get over it. You know. <laughs> yeah, but like the good thing with Limbus, I mean, it was so like the like every level, I, lo I can't speak. Every level was unique, so there was a different mechanic to to all of it. So I'd be interesting if they did uh, or interested to to know what they would change if they did, because that content I thought it was fun, but yeah, you know, it hmm. was a uh, it was amazing, especially during the day. You know, especially when you have like uh, if you ever played Ranger back during them and then and oh well they. These mobs are weak to slashing. Well, I guess I'm putting on my axes. Mm. You know, you I just kind of had a a good old hot mixed bag of every job was expected to not just like you, it was anticipated. If you were going to bring a job that primarily was like a slashing DPS, but you could equip a spear, even if it was significantly worse damage for you, you'd probably equip it because you'd be doing massive damage against things that were piercing weak. Hmm. As far as um, future updates go, on a on a kind of similar note to Paladin, I don't I don't think Paladin has seen the last of the updates it's getting as well. I think it and another job we'll probably talk about later on is going to get a pretty substantial update. So, uh, I would put good money on Warrior, Samurai, and Rune Fencer being the last jobs they ever touch. Yeah, and um, yeah. So, uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, just before I, you know, we talk about um, another another job, I just wanted to, to go back to something you mentioned. And for me, like coming back to the game, like Red Mage was actually my job. So um, since watching your video, I've kind of been re-inspired re to kind of get things going. I have most of the gear, but like now I'm working on the zero TP set. But um, so I'm interested to know, like, so how do you think red mage is um in a good spot in terms of in-game content so where how, how do you utilize the class oh. now and the content that you do oh man where do i even begin here um whew. okay that sound you opened up a big old can of worms and i'm okay. ready <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes yeah. he, he makes his own beer so you know we're good because by the time he's ready to start it'll sure be do. six o'clock so okay right um Okay, you kind of have to look at where Red Mage was before it got any of its adjustments. You never saw Red Mage in any end game whatsoever. You occasionally right. saw them during during mana burst setups when they nerfed Geo Geo Langor and Indie Focus. Um, but post updates, you the place I see Red Mage most most employed is in Dynamis Wave Three. Like geomancy debuffs are heavily, heavily nerfed in Wave Three dynamics. There's a reason they use G indie. They'll use like Geo Barrier and Indie Fury or something. It's Puts what a seventy-five percent uh, nerf on a geomancy. Yeah, debuffs. it's wow. steep. It's really steep. And also in some of the high tier battlefields, like Odin VD, his Odin, way, he's got. What is it? Odin, Alexander, Alexander Lilith, and Kate Sith all have the uh, geomancy nerf on them. Pretty sure. I'm not sure about Lilith. I think Lilith just has a, just, just just doesn't have much HP, so you don't really notice it. But yeah, Red Mage to Wave Three Dynamis. Just use one example. You've got Distract for pretty much flooring a target's evasion against like some of these thieves and dancers on Wave Three. That's an absolute godsend. You've got Inundation for for 
which will which which will never fail to land. You got Dia three, which is twenty percent defense down, slightly more if a core light shots it. So you still got defense down. Um, haste means you only need to use haste two means you only need to use honor march as your only haste song means that frees up other things. And it's just yeah, it's just a brilliant it's a brilliant job to bring for wave three dynamis. Um, Odin. He's just red mage is just brilliant. If you stack Carnage Elegy and uh, slow two, you pretty much cripple him. Um, also in Omen, um, I've since been using red mage, especially post Paladin update. I've been using red mage as a healer on pretty much all of the bosses. Yeah. yeah it's just... Also too, yeah. like when I came back. Um... The, the update was actually was what made me kind of start looking at it because I think it was the beginning of 2019 is when the update was. But um, also, is it what Saboteur where you can now kind of get multiple big buffs stacked? Because um, it used oh, to just be one spell, right? Or is it... Yeah. yeah. Saboteur used to only last for the next Enfeebling Magic spell and then it would wear off. Right. So it would actually land. So it was a pretty meh ability, especially in high-end content. Now it lasts for an entire minute, and it's got an increased immuno break chance. So even against really high end content, Red Mage legitimately does not need indie focus or geo Langor to land stuff, even on Dynamis Wave Three, which is pretty much the highest level content right now. Oh, and uh, and on Master Trials, it's like being able to fully debuff Shadow Lord on Unafraid of the Dark without getting a single resist. I just stymied Frazzle Three, and just everything landed easy. He died pretty well. We were on course to win that fight in about 10 minutes, but something went wrong towards the end and there was a little bit of a hold up, but we still pulled through and won. Um, yeah, the Saboteur update was nice. Uh, it was, was really nice. Uh, composure gave even more magic accuracy and also tripled and spelled damage. There's a reason you see so many people wanting to buy and sell the Crozier Moors. I would yeah. actually, I would, I would honestly rank that as one of the best REMA weapons in the game. Yeah, no, I'm, make, I'm yeah, I'm gonna pick that up. I'm uh, I'll, I'm finishing my goldsmithing shield this week actually, so that's really hey, been hey. spending all yeah, <laughs> spending all my extra time outside of our events getting that finished. So once I do, I'm definitely buying picking up that that sword. But yeah, that shield, then, I'm so ready to be done with it. And then and then the next update you had um, you had Red Mage get all of its tier two and feebles available at maximum power so you now had blind two you had para slow two um bio three dia three it's just like wow this is stuff which you could only, you could have only dreamt of at 75 cap you had all the all these brilliant spells but you could only max out two of them yeah i'm excited but now you yeah, yeah so now you've got all of them looking back at a lot of that stuff like I don't know about you guys, but I personally, like, I myself feel when they raise the uh, cap from 75 to, yeah, and they increment, uh, raise it in uh, increments, but when they hit 99, I feel like they should have released, like, the scrolls for those spells and should have changed a lot of the way the uh, group yeah. 2 merits and stuff like that worked, because, like, yeah, you know, some jobs which they've uh, touched up, like uh, Red Mage recently... Or um, even Black Mage is doing really, really good with its uh, updates. And then you have some jobs that had uh, like a Ninja with the Sand Spells, which was a pretty big nerf. Yeah, they. Yeah. Excuse my excuse the expression, but Ninja essentially just straight up got fucked out of that. Yeah. Like they, they, they lost. Like yeah. even in CP setups, they went from being able to hit max damage on their like their sand spells to being able to hit like 30k and nobody cares about 30k damage on crabs uh, i mean we're kind of we're kind of just but yeah <clears throat> they <laughs> whatsoever but yeah the final the final patch for um well indirect patch for red mage was the um uh, malignant gear oh uh, yeah. just the the stuff that a fully decked out red mage could do now is just bonkers can solo omen bosses i've seen a red mage solo ou yeah That's i just watched like, that video the other day i was like how that, is this even possible <laughs> that malignant gear is so amazing for every single job that actually has like a mythic weapon main hand not like a gun or a bow or whatever but like a mythic weapon main hand that can use it 
Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> So do you think they, um, you know, looking at uh, Geomancer, do you think they, like, over-buffed that job and they're trying to kind of bring it back down through content versus kind of giving it a direct nerf? Yeah, yeah. I think that um, Geomancer was already... Well, when Geomancer was first was first released, it was a pretty useless job. Like, its spells had... it. Okay, its spells were weak. Geomancer only got strong when they introduced Geomancy Plus gear on the Dunner and especially on the Idris. Yeah, and I think they increased the skill cap. I don't uh, don't really quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they did. I would, um, I'd, I'd have to double check, but I think 900 is actually higher, significantly higher than what the original cap was, even at 99 with gear. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um. I think they've. I mean, I mean, we we talked about the original nerf to Indie Focus and Geo Langor, but they've kind of been toying around with the idea of um, just making Geomancy less effective on fights, so we're not just only taking that job in lieu of everything else. Like, okay, we we um, Geomancy's nerfed in Dynamis Wave Three. It's nerfed on some some Ambuscade fights. It's nerfed on. Um, Pretty much all of the high tier battlefields, the higher up you go in difficulty. Um, um, if you nerf Geomancer, that's going to create a vacuum and people are just going to flounder around, not sure what to actually do. This is something they've been doing very, very unsteadily. I think that when I think that Idris, at the time when Idris was first released, it was ridiculously overpowered to the extent you could literally have. Um, a Geomancer doing Geovex and in India Tumen. Oh, that's um, that's the two other spells they nerfed, by the way. Um, Vex and Tumen got. I mean, those two spells you could just use those and just shut absolutely everything down. Like nothing would even touch your front line. No, like was, was like no damage from the AOE attacks. Was no status ailments. But yeah, I think. I think they they are trying to tone down Geomancer, but they're not doing it too much in one shot, because people would literally not know what to do. Meta yeah. changes don't happen overnight. Yeah. No, I mean I kind of like the change because I mean I think it's still nice to have Geomancer super relevant in some content, but it is nice to see them kind of forcing a shift in um, how you approach some content, or even if it's not a shift, it's you know. Uh, giving you a uh, incentive to change uh, the the group composition that you take into some content, so it seems like a decent approach to me. Mm. I mean, I've got Geomancer geared up and good to go. I just I haven't used it for a while because it's kind of hard to justify when you've got a bard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would actually I would actually say bard is more important to end game now than. So do you think, uh, well, I mean, that kind of leads me into another question is, do you think that job or is are there any other jobs that you think um, need um, to be in the next updates that uh, need some changes? <laughs> oh, yes. There's two off the top of my head. And I think, I think people listening into this and watching this, <laughs> number one job that needs a patch is Ninja. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that, job need, that job needs a patch so badly it's not even funny. Um, yeah, okay, that where... is something I will happily drink to. <laughs> yeah. Where do I even begin on ninja? Crikey. Okay, when you see when you see Korea ninjas dual wielding ambuscade swords rather rather than katanas and spamming savage blade. Yep. It kind of it kind of kind of it kind of indicates something is not quite right. <laughs> yeah. To me, to me, katanas need the full on hand to hand weapon skill treatment like the update monk and pup got. They it needs that they need to have higher FTP. FTP needs to transfer balanced out across the hits. Multi attack needs to have more of a bearing than it does. And and this one is really bugging me. I can't believe they still not patched this. Why the hell does Blade He have a flipping agility mod? Yeah, I don't know. I, is, is that's I, the uh, <laughs> what, which, that's, I mean, do you want the uh, I don't know. Do you want the honest American answer to that because I've got a great answer that covers a lot of the. Why the hell does this have that? Okay, it's trying because. To... Oh, why the hell does uh, Ninja have agility mods on this weapon skill? Because fuck you. <laughs> because fuck you. <laughs> like I, I almost... mean, that's 
for lack of a better way to put it, that's that's the only thing that makes sense. Like, like I could understand why some things aren't like like why not all of the you know merit weapon skills are absolutely godsend amazing, but why mm. does you know why does yep. uh, why does you know a lot of them have weapons uh, have modifiers that don't even make sense to any of the five jobs that can freaking use that weapon weapon skill mm. i'd also like to see ninja ninja doesn't need doesn't just need a hand in its uh, in its dps ability i want to see exclusive to it that it can only get above job level that stops any that that will that will stop any aoe attack from just clearing its azemi in one shot <clears throat> because you can you can literally do like diaga boom and ninja's defense is gone no other job has that weakness so you yeah, think they should the remove the uh, AOEs from removing those shadows? Um, yeah, I think I think the AOE should take like two or three, depending on the tier of the spell. Say like something casts Fire Aga three, it will take three. It's a Zemi shadows or something. Something does a Jar spell, it takes five. Someone does Meteor, you're shit out of luck. That's just that's just going to clear your shadows in one go. <laughs> um, it's going to no. be hard to really. It, it's going to be hard to nail down, but also think that same trait should also give ninja more hate for every shadow it loses rather than lose hate ninja ninja should gain hate with every shadow it loses yeah that was gonna be my next thing is like i'm not super familiar with the with the job but don't you lose hate for every shadow that you that you lose uh yonin changes it's a zemi yonin ninjas it's like the basics are there like same amount of shadows if you got jsc to push it further but it's a zemi gains the same hate I think it's probably the same hate as a base foil. Okay. Uh, Itchy Knee and Sun all get the same um, hate values. Is you can push that hate pretty high because Ninja's SU five katana on the C path is like like for the 70, 80 enmity. <laughs> if you've got if you've got all your shadows up, which is pretty which is which is pretty crazy, all things considered. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's just it's just a mission keeping them. I mean, Ninja has got some abilities that can actually help the tank. Like a second gun is what Paladin should have. But a second gun is like every single hit you parry on Ninja, you gain a crap ton of um, cumulative and volatile entity. It's like, dude, if you if you use that on a monk doing for the hundred fists on you, you not only parry every other hit they throw at you, but your hate is through the roof. I'm like, dude, that's something Paladin should have, but for like shield blocks. Oh yeah, that, that's a whole other thing yeah. with shield, but. Um... So what um, what else do you think uh, that it would need outside? Um, or I guess a better question is, do you think they haven't done a big update because there's so much to be done? They're afraid of like breaking it. I mean, because um, I feel like across the board, it's just I don't know, it just needs so much. Yeah, I think I think there's no two ways about it. Ninja. There's another dead job, which we'll probably go over briefly afterwards. Um, but yeah, they need to do something pretty, pretty um substantial for Ninja. Well, the last thing I'll do for Ninja, Paladin's now got AOE curing. Rune Fencer has got AOE magic defense with Alliance and Lament. Um, mm -hmm. Ninja needs something else. I think Ninja needs to have an ability like a Blue Mage's just Blue Mage's Diffusion, where the next Ninjutsu spell, if it affects yourself, hits hits some everyone in your party. Hey, AOE if shadows. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, AOE shadows. And when you consider, if you if you if you if you're doing that, and you've got Yonin stance up, that means you get hate for every single person that's a Zemi lands on. So that's like a Rune Fencer's layman. Wow, I don't. I've literally never heard that, but that's amazing. I think we just or got insights could... to one of your next videos, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, <laughs> um, another, there is there is another application for something like that. You could use it with Migawari to stop to pretty much just stop to to, to just stop your your um your party being one shotted. Like, could you imagine if Ninja was the only tank in the game that could that could stop everyone from being one shotted? Yeah. So if you had to pick one, it it sounds like you'd lean towards the the latter here. But would you rather them buff the job to where they're a better DPS, or they buff the job to where they're a better tank? A better tank. I think they need to. They need. They can't be ambiguous. Although it's where they've been do it. When Ninja was first designed, it was meant to be a ranged DPS or just a DPS which could in which could which could enfeeble like okay fair enough but people ended up repurposing it into a tank because of its 
samurai was meant to be the tank <laughs> with a sake on a third eye yeah yeah it was i distinctly remember that but they there isn't much room for a job that just doesn't do well either i mean paladin being a really good healer now has kind of brought it, it up a fair bit yeah they need to actually make a decision on ninja and i'd say you know what make it a tank Fix it as Emmy. Make sure, make sure it can't lose all of its shadows in one go. Um, but as Emmy, need, but shadows need to need, need to give more hate when they're lost. And yeah, I would just make it a really solid tank for things that you just literally do not want to hit you. Because yeah, a ninja, that would and, be, and... I could make a lot of sense of that. And uh, there's a lot of times in which, like, you know, in uh, especially in like Dynamis with like uh, some of the abilities, like Thousand Fists on like the Law of the Wave two bosses, or even yeah. being a Rune Fencer, if Batua's down, like you're just gonna have a bad time. Yeah. Whereas Ninja could tank that pretty easily. You just use this. The second game parries proc through shadows, so you could literally mm. just rotate it's a Zemi Ni and Sun with the second gun up. And I've actually done that before. I know the exact boss you're talking about. That's the one that gets the slow and add aura, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, done that. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, yeah, no, it's some that's some good points. I mean, the job too is just fun to play. So either way it goes, oh, yeah. it'd be great to, to just, see above. So what's um so what's uh what other what's this, what would be number two on your on your list for <laughs> next up? Black Mage. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 That poor Black job. Oh my god. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Right. Oh my god. When I when I quit <laughs> when I quit last, it was like black mage everything, and then I came back yeah. and it was like, it's like it's you know you're an unemployed uh, worker trying yeah. to find a job. So. Yeah, pretty much. I can I mean. I'll be black mage. Yeah, yeah, all good. Um, Black Mage has just literally lost its lost its purpose now. A scholar who used to only be able to set up skill chains for it can now hit um, cap damage on nuke. Right. So you pretty much invalidate the job by its own support. <laughs> so, yeah, we take yeah. Uh, we take scholars in over Black Mages to handle you know objectives Absolutely. and different things. It's like I don't need a Black Mage. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, scholar can do those magic bursts and magic damage duties, but if you need a healer and a pinch, there it is. It's right there. You yep. just haven't swapped the light arts. Yeah. Um, how, how we fix Black Mage, I'll be real, I legit don't know. I think there's so much wrong with that job. I th okay, I'm, I'm literally just scrambling around here. Um, maybe, <laughs> there's a maybe, lot maybe, to, to try to fix it's it. It's tough, it's <laughs> tough, isn't it? Um, I'd say... Um, I like Black Mage to be the only job that can actually break the damage cap on on a, a magic bursts. So I, like, I would like that. You wanted to go over. Um... Yeah, I think Black Mage should be able to. And I think magical critical magic critical hit rate needs to actually do something noticeable rather than just be a worthless stat. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I haven't even read enough into that. I'm assuming it just procs every now and then and. Yeah, it does and it damage. gives like it does like a tiny amount. It's very, very negligible. Like, barely notice it, even at, even at the best of times. Um, what else does Black Mage need? Crikey! Um, I always thought Black Mage should have gotten some exclusive dark magic uh, nuke spells, like Void, Void Two, Void Three, or something. Yeah, that's where like I was leaning. It was like I feel like there's just like some type of spell or something that will set it apart from from other classes i can you know cast because i mean i'll be honest with you even my red mage can nuke pretty high <laughs> so it's like something <laughs> that makes it not just a, a class i can nuke but um because so, it, the the big the big nerf too was like if you what cast the same spell over and over it does less and less is that yeah, am I accurate you, there? it's during a magic burst window it's part of the reason people were so it's it's part of the reason rune fence again after the first spell in a magic burst window is hit and actually magic burst subsequent spells gradually and quite steeply do less damage as they land so you would do like you do like one cap death and water of courage for like cap damage and then you would have another one do like 60k next one does 30k next one does 10k like huh what's this all about 
is your gear just not swapping or something I'm like <laughs> nah that's just the that's just the um re- that's just the um resist wall that's so, uh, a fusion a fusion rake from rune fencer basically increased the uh increased the cap on that that's why i used to see runes in magic burn setups so yeah. my thought with black mage has always has been um what they really need to do to bring Black Mage back into its own like standpoint to make it unique again, like it should, it should be the only job with access to like impact. You know, it's an amazing, you know, ner- it's an amazing nuke that I think the only ways to get it is uh, the Twilight cro- uh, Cloak. I yeah. might be wrong on that, but like yeah, Black Mage right should, there. Black Mage should have impact because like mm. the value of that spell especially when you're doing like your wave three if you have a red mage who has the cloak and can use impact and have it land like the value of that spell is immense yeah um also, all like right, black, mage, uh, black mage also needs to be able to do something like because occult acumen is an amazing job ability that is so underutilized in the game be, uh, excuse me, job trait, because being able to generate TP based off of what you got going, what you're already doing anyways as the job. Like, mm. I on, I personally feel like if uh, if there was more to do other than just murk her to get ready your, nef- your next uh, death volley, like, I really feel like Black Mage's Rima weapons would be a lot higher priority than just, like, having Laffy and calling it good enough. Yeah. On the, you were just you were just talking about impact, and I hate to really kind of I, I hate to bring this up again, but um, Scholar has got Black Mage beat. Hand. Scholar can get really good dark magic skill when it's got dark arts up. It it's on the Twilight Cloak, and you can mm-hmm. use Alacrity. You can use Alacrity to give it like pretty much inst, um, insta cast, and you can use Focalization to buff up your magic accuracy because you, know, you had to drop some eye level. It's like. My scholar can throw out impact every ten seconds <laughs> if it wants to. Jeez. It's like yes. Yeah, another thing, scholar just completely trounces black mage for. I think. Um, I think another thing which could happen to black mage is cascade. Cascade. Cascade takes it takes the takes the black mage's TP and increases magic damage. They need to do something more with that because, like you said, TP is best reserved for Mercury if you're actually burning something. So that's kind of a pointless job ability, as far as I see it. It's just so so much about Black Mage that needs uh, that needs patching. Um, another job which I'd like to see get a slight update is um, Blue Mage. And come <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you're doing that a lot. Today. Like, uh, <laughs> you, you have no clue how happy you made me hear you say that. The whole reason yeah. that I even came back to this game, I, like I'm not even a lie, I was watching uh, Mario Maker videos, making levels for my niece and nephew, and I somehow, mm-hmm. between watching that, and I stumbled across a video of a uh, Spicy Ryan soloing pack a set, and I was just like, that doesn't look like he should be able to do that. Okay, I'm interested yeah. in this game again. Okay, we're talking. I mean, if we're talking about jobs that were really that, because going off of past experience, they really, really for a time when it was like the only DPS job you'd see. It's like they they have to be super careful with how they do this. I think Blue Mage's problem is when you start buffing other jobs especially your heavy dps jobs like your warrior your samurai your monk your your dark knights blue mage gets left behind very very quickly it's like okay savage blade and expiation can do some good damage but you're not doing cap damage with them yeah aren't you uh doesn't blue mage get the the shaft on what most of the omen gear it seems to like some of the yeah it does yeah it does i I mean uh we got regal neck dog. We can't be, uh, we can't be <laughs> beat beggar. bigger beggars yeah. over here, right? Uh, what I think Blue Mage needs, Blue Mage needs to have um, the damage limit trait on a spell that it can set so it can instantly get three tiers of it. That will, that will put it on the same tier level as Monk, Ranger, and Dragoon. I think if a blue mage fully commits their um their spell set for a DPS, they should they should get some really really good damage out of it. Because if you fully if you fully spec yourself for DPS, 
you lose a lot of your utility. So it's kind of a give and take. Um, I'd like to see some of the unbridled learning spells be taken off unbridled learning and just be stuff you can set because the only unbridled learning spell you generally ever cast is Mighty Guard because it's just so good. So that job ability is pretty much, it shouldn't even be called unbridled learning, called a Mighty Guard. You can now use it. <laughs> well, the I only mean... time you, yeah, the only time you'll ever use any of <laughs> wisdom. So I think that needs a that needs a change as well. And uh, unbridled wisdom is it, it, it's terrible. It's it, it burns it's through your, your MP uh, really quick. <laughs> yeah, and it burns through your MP, so you can do less significant damage than if you just swung your swords at something. Yeah. For the uh, for the ignorant, uh, what is uh, what is this job ability? Does it just enable you to? Yeah, um, unbridled learning lets you lets you pick from. Blue Mage can learn H and M spells, which are always set. They're just they they just can't be accessed until you use unbridled learning, and then it wears off after one cast. Unbridled wisdom is a Blue Mage's second SP ability, and it pretty much it's the same thing as unbridled learning, but it lasts for thirty seconds rather than rather than wearing off immediately. So you can just chain together a bunch of H and M spells, but since you can't skill chain with them without Azure Law. And since you'll burn through your MP if you're just doing Mighty Garden Shell, Kacharian Verve, and all that, it's like you'll get to the end of it and like, oh great, now what? It's not like it's not like Brazen Rush where where like a warrior pops Brazen Rush, you're like, okay, you're about to go absolutely absolutely medieval on something. <laughs> but, but yeah, that just needs a whole do over. I'd what? say Blue Mage is up there. It's not uh, it's not as urgent as Black Mage and Ninja because Blue Mage has still got some practical use for a group, but it should be up there. Yeah, I, <clears throat> just thinking about Black Mage stresses me out because I think it's gotten to a point where like it's so far behind like on the way content is handled now. So it's like, where do they even try to inject an update to to make it relevant? Just the way they've designed everything else. So I don't even know if they know what to do with it. The really sad thing, and this kind of underlines the entire Black Mage's express purpose is to do lots of magic damage, correct? Corsair and Ranger beat it at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is actually legit how bad it is. <laughs> yeah. And fa I mean yeah. faster. I mean I mean you, I get you get TP just so fast on the classes, because I mean mm, it, in what we run, shot. I mean I run yeah, Ranger and he Bob runs Corsair and um you're just constantly weapon skilling so it's it's crazy yeah. um, and we essentially get to do it with almost no limits oh you need we, we've got a statue in a way okay 1500 tp sounds good yeah. you know and gone. and gone yep um cool so um let's let's shift gears just a little bit um and you know pull out a topic that might be a little bit away from retail and um so because before i i came back to to retail i actually played i tried to play like on the private side of things do you have any history with uh like private servers or any any thoughts or what do you think about that is there a place for that in the community i don't have any experience but i have had people approach me if i server okay my perspective on this i think there is a but i think se needs to finally just bite the bullet and release a legacy server do you think so they have it a, i i think they could easily do it they just like a server which just gradually say like every six months just 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 like added added a new expansion or something what um, um oh go ahead sorry <clears throat> Yeah, personally, I don't, I don't want to go back to playing on a level seventy-five legacy server, because I'll be real, I didn't like seventy-five cap a whole lot. I had to level dragoon and puppet masters to um, seventy-five <laughs> for a reason. Let's just say, yeah, I didn't like how parochial it was. It was like it was even worse than than like the worst pie. Um, the worst times in this game's history is like you only saw a handful of jobs ever doing end game and it was literally just flavor of the month and oh. i i absolutely i absolutely hated i never did 
the only end game I ever did at 75 cap was Limbus. Uh, occasional Dynamis, but Limbus uh, just. I refused to get involved in camping camping ground kings because I just didn't want to wake up at flipping like three o'clock <laughs> in the morning just to log on. I'm like, no, sod that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna be honest, playing. Mike. My high school and college scores would look a lot better if I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why. Uh, like, so like I think um, uh, there's a probably a spot for it, but like it's just. It's not for me. I understand why people want to play it. Like that nostalgia oh, is pretty absolutely. strong. Um, but for yeah. me, I mean, like I, mean, I have a kid now, one on the way, and there's no way I could dedicate that type of time. Like it's it's so great now being able to, because I still play a lot, but we schedule stuff. Like we can log on and do an entire event in a couple hours versus, you know, yeah. you really had to dedicate five, six, seven hours to, to really, you know, if it was a big sky run mm -hmm. that you did, um, you had to dedicate just a ton of time to it. So, um, but so I'm interested why you think uh, Square Enix needs to do it, and it's not um, left best just to thrive in um, the private side. Well, well, the most simple answer is if they host the server, then they. <laughs> so, you, yeah. You cut. You cut out there. What was that? Um, the simplest answer is if they. If they are the ones that are actually hosting the server, if they're like hosting a legacy server, then that's another sub fee they're getting. Okay. So that would be my 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 immediate answer to that. I think Square Enix Square Enix probably they don't mind the fact that people are playing on a private server. I don't, I think they actually like it. There's kind of like, oh, people actually enjoyed the way it was back then. So if they if they've got a modicum of business sense, they should really be capitalizing on that and saying, look, there is a legacy server here. Maybe we'll like reduce the sub fee for it because there's um like not as much content. But they could easily turn that into into something real because the community is definitely there. I don't doubt I I don't doubt their um enthusiasm. It, actually, if anything, I quite like it. It's just that wasn't a very good time. That was that that wasn't a very good time in my in my eyes because it's just. I think that people kind of look back on that with some with um some roast some rose tinted glasses, and yeah, yeah, for they sure. They kind of like they they um only take the good, but they don't remember waking up at three o'clock or something and getting out, or getting like outclaimed on Needhog or something by a bot. <laughs> yeah, whoever had a NAS server <laughs> to like, auto claim me, everything. I, I promise you, I remember those probably far more than I remember the handful of times you actually get to, you know, use like Ranger for example and be able to do like Culver in and drop 10k damage in sub 10 seconds on something. I mean, you were dead after you did it, but it, so it didn't really matter. Oh yeah, but... oh yeah, you weren't surviving that the Culver and the what's it. Um, Spinning. Hellfire yeah. bullet or something like that. The cannon shells, whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. had like twenty. They have damage numbers. <clears throat> it has base damage comparable to like current end game ammunition. <clears throat> it's just like, what the hell wow. are you doing with this twenty yeah. levels ago? You know. I I always wondered why Thief was on the as well. I'm like, dude, the Culverin's like a thin. It's like a shotgun. <laughs> almost <laughs> it's pretty much that's pretty much what it is the in-game model like, looks like a rudimentary shotgun <laughs> interesting yeah i don't know it's definitely better left a, a memory for me it's that way i can just remember the things that i i did enjoy because yeah. i tried it for like a week and i'm like i can't <laughs> do this <laughs> nah, i can never do that no nah, that's just look, i appreciate people reaching but I appreciate that. I'm not demeaning what you actually like doing. It's just, it just doesn't hold many good, many good memories for me. Yeah, I think it would be interesting if they did do it, and you know, let um, at a, at a you know highly reduced cost. Um, I, I just don't know if they, with their dev team being so small, if they have the resources to support <laughs> uh, the well, two games in fourteen as well. Well, I would say. Um, I would say they should really take some inspiration from Blizzard. I know you haven't really heard that a lot lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, wow, for classic. Few... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, wow, classic. Because like, 
this has kind of proved that there is some people just thrive off of off of off of nostalgia and like okay that's not necessarily a bad thing and if there is and if there is a market there you should really go for it yeah no i was uh, blown away cuz i think it was the first time twitch had ever reached over like a million viewers or something as soon as it launched it was uh, oh yeah it was insane and then the amount of players that they had, like just waiting to get into the servers. I mean, even the uh, what you call it guy came out and said, "Yeah, we were wrong." Because you know, a few years ago, he said, "You know, nobody wants to play a classic version of the game." Um, and then <laughs> clearly, was proven wrong. <laughs> Did either of y'all happen to actually catch the um, the dude who was the world first level sixty in that? No, but I heard he was like jumping between realms and like there was like some weird way that he did it that they so got rid of when they did it because they didn't they released a couple of like different servers, if you will, of it. And instead of just being like you're limited to this server, you got multiple realms for it. And so he was using that to realm hop between uh, like three or four different realms within the same server. And uh, yeah. When he finally did it, he uh, he was able to actually b significantly beat people who had been um, because like there had been a couple of uh like professional gaming teams who had been working on building methods to do it that they thought was going to be the most efficient versus the method he used, which was doing that server that realm hopping, if you will. Did that cost him anything, or um? Was it just free so, transfers? All right. So what was happening is he was, as he would level, he'd have a friend who would keep reloading the game until he landed in a different realm than he was. Cause it's all, an, it's a same server. It's just a different realm. And so until he did that, and once the guy landed in that different realm, he would hit join one, kill everything he needed. He would join party on the other dude. And then the other dude would leave and he'd kill everything he needed and somebody else would be trying to set up the next realm. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's some <clears throat> that is some pretty heavy dedication there. Yeah. And um by doing that method, I, I think he cut like three hours or something like that off of the next best players um one to sixty so, time. So wait, he did this just for the express purpose of saying, "Oh, hey, I was the first guy that did it." No, there was a uh, a prize from Blizzard for whoever hit sixty first, and I think they still <laughs> I think they still honored it because technically he wasn't breaking the rules. It was just something that they hadn't implemented. But since they've actually patched that out, so you can't do that anymore. Yeah, so. I would always get I would always get a bit dubious if Blizzard is offering prize money. Yeah, <laughs> somebody. <laughs> Somebody's gonna get creative. So, um, okay. So, you know, I think uh, you know we've covered a a lot of a lot of good topics, and um, you know, like I said, I think um, hopefully in the future, you know, maybe we can gather some other people and there'll be some some good talking points. And um, I think you've given some stuff to think about for uh, some. It sounds like some of your upcoming videos. So we appreciate that. Um, yeah, we've I got a. Uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry, I will say though that um, apart from apart from that video, which spoiled there, the next job guide is going to be bar. And following that, I like to get back to doing my um, law video series. I've not touched that for a while, and I've got some really good ideas. It's going to be a collab. There's another there's another channel on YouTube called the Mog House. Okay, he's a really neat yeah he's a really neat guy. Um, he's done some pretty interesting law videos himself. It's going to be a collab effort because this is going to be a pretty expansive and long series. It's not just like a one-off law video. This has got a few parts to it. It's going to be a series on the, oh yeah, and I might as well just tell you all right now what it is. <laughs> just, just to kind of set the, uh, set the mood. It's, there. um, it's a series on the serpent generals of Artogun. Okay. And if you can, if you've ever done their quest lines, it's like their like their backstories are really interesting. Like one of them's a guy who was about to be executed for treason. One of them was or was about to be executed for desertion. One's a foreign mercenary, and one's an assassin. <laughs> so it's pretty much the original the original Avengers of Van Adeel. It's Man. a complete bunch of misfits. Makes me want to go. Well, I, on my uh, 
Well, that'll give me something to do because on my uh, character where I'm finishing my shield, I've got to go through and beat all the missions. So I was <clears> always <throat> really bad about paying attention to lore, and it's actually you know not my proudest thing, but uh, I've gotten more interested in it and as I've uh, played more. And it's actually how I found your channel originally on the Scholar one. Um, someone I saw. I was oh, flipping, really? Yeah, I was flipping through Reddit, and I found someone had posted your video on Reddit, and uh, I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know someone could get this elaborate. <laughs> and then, um, and then yeah, I pretty much binge-watched yeah. a lot of your videos. So, Yeah, my law series started off as pretty much a one-off. I but to this day, it's got like the most views and the most likes of any of my videos. If not, it's well up there. It's like, wow, okay, I wasn't expecting that to take off. Then I did one on Dragoon, and they just kept going. I'm like, okay, all right, then let's roll with this. I can do this as a side series. Yeah, so, I, yeah. I mean, it comes yeah. down to, I mean, one, your presentation is great, and then just the the sound quality is awesome. So the two together just uh, just make for for great video. So I'm looking forward to uh, to the series that you just uh, gave us a sneak peek on. So when can we uh, maybe be expecting something like that? You said uh, a few months, I would months? say I would say within the next month, if not if not the end of January, I'd say mid February. Okay. Okay. Same thing with the the Bard video? Uh, no, the Bard video you should have in about two weeks. Oh, nice. That's yeah. definitely... Uh, bo both of those sets of content are definitely worth uh, looking forward to. Uh, yeah. For your Bard video, are you going to be doing uh, much talking about like uh, the Battle Bard setups as well? Or are you going to be talking yeah. primarily... I'm yeah, super I'm... excited to hear that. Yeah, I'll be talking about how you can actually do damage, but I'm going to emphasize that you need to know when that's actually necessary and when you need to just fall back and sub white mage and help out. There is there is a time and place for everything, and there are some. I mean, at its core, bard is actually really simple. Like right? the mechanics are simple, songs are simple, song plus duration is all simple. But there are some things which I which I'll be talking about, which maybe even some veteran players don't know. Like, just just like one example right here. I've seen quite a few bards who don't know that Carol 1 is actually better for Magic of Asian than Carol 2. And subsequently, they don't bother learning Carol 1. I'm like, nah, Carol 2 is capped at, at a certain level, but Carol 1 can go, can go pretty far. <laughs> about like the in spells for Red Mage people using. Yeah, pretty much. Like if you uh, if you stack say if you stack two two um dark carols on any of the omen bosses they're an absolute joke. You like shut down all of their attacks. It's literally just it's, it's literally a win the game button. They don't curse you. They don't land bio interference. Does no damage. <laughs> it's just so easy. <laughs> wow, well, I'm getting I'm excited for that one because I'm actually getting ready to. I have an alternate character where I've leveled up Bard and started to gear it, but I have no idea how to play it. So I'll be looking forward mm -hmm. to to that uh, to that video. So. Yeah, he's kind of saying uh, "spoon feed me, daddy" right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> and to any to any to any players who are watching this right now, sure when they're ready for content, you don't need to have all of your REMA instruments. You do need to, the only two I would say you absolutely need before you attempt end game up to Omen and Dynamis Wave 2 is the Marcius and the uh, Galahorn. You should be working towards the four song harp, Dada Alba. I can never pronounce that fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, no, I'm going to try. I say the D. Hey. <laughs> I've always called yeah. it the uh, Duradabla, but Duradabla. Me, I'm at that oh, right whatever. age where I uh, grew up on Hooked on Phonics, so I already know I'm mispronouncing everything. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you only need those two. You should eventually be working towards song harp. I'll just call it the fourth song harp. But say like you would like get to an omen boss or like or like a wave two boss, you would just go and pop clarion call. There you go, four songs. True. So yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's all for the preview for that. I'm still working on it. <laughs> all right. Well, we appreciate it. Um, let's uh, let's let's hit the last little section here and um. You know, I've got a, a few questions from, um, I took one from Reddit, one from uh, the forums, and, um, or two from the forums, sorry. 
so first question is, I guess, uh, with having so many uh, jobs geared, um, someone was asking for tips on like how you maximize your, your inventory space. Oh, um, well, it's actually, I don't mean to sound condescending like this, it seems. Um, I typically reserve the wall for pieces of gear that can be used across multiple jobs and jo and um, and job capes. So capes and pieces which aren't JSC generally go across the wardrobes. That way, if I need to get a job out, I can just go to my mog safes, locker, satchel, sack or case. There's a lot of storage, actually, when you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, I can literally just go into one of those and fish out like 10 to 15 pieces of JSC and boom, I'm good to go. So I would reserve your wardrobes for pieces that are not exclusive to one job. If you can help it, it's not always possible. I also keep REMA weapons in the wardrobes as well. That way I don't accidentally toss them or anything. <laughs> so <laughs> I have seen it happen to someone else before and it was not a good scene. <laughs> so yeah, not, yeah, yeah I, I, not keen on that at all. <laughs> yep. No, I don't keep anything that I know. Yeah, I don't keep anything in my inventory because I've – this is like a side topic. I'm going to vent a little bit. I've been <laughs> scammed twice by those Pluton bazaars, so I already know that I would drop uh, armor in my inventory if I had it. So, yeah, you know, when they list a Pluton for 700K instead of 7K and you go in and you buy a stack of it, yeah. I've done that mm. twice now. So yeah, it was a, quite unfortunate. The first time he did it, we just kind of were like, "Man, that sucks." We feel bad for you. The second time he did it, mm. he maybe got a ten-second window of rest, and we all just started making fun of him. <laughs> it was <laughs> ruthless. Uh, oh yeah, I should say something else. I do. I tend to keep um, JSC for different job classes storage. Say like my my um. Uh, my locker tends to have a lot of my mage pieces. Say it'll, it'll hold my um, red mage JSC, my white mage scholar JSC, my bard JSC. That way, if I need to be in like a healer or a support, I'm like, okay, I need to go to my um, mog locker. Boom, there it is. It's right there. All my heavy DPS is in mog safe one and two. Um, Puppet master, which is its own, which takes up an entire flipping satchel by itself. <laughs> <laughs> which I should probably I should probably downsize on that at some point. And um yeah, mod case is um Ranger and Corsair. But Corsair I haven't used in flipping ages. Kinda hard to justify it when you've got Bard and Geo. <laughs> yeah. So uh you um so essentially, you know, whatever um items that are um uh dependent on like a mage class or DPS, you kinda try to segment that way too, is that what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully that answers the the question that 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 person asked. I thought it was pretty good. Um, so, um, go ahead. Since we're actually on the topic of that, for all of those uh, various uh, damage types or uh, gear set types, how do you go about adjusting sets when you when new gear gets released, like when the malignant set came out or the new most recent domain invasion gear? Um, well, for malignants, malignants. Were and i would just um say there'll be like some pieces which i was using other jobs that were in those slots but say i would like have some like herculean pieces with with um, different stats on it or something i just said okay you're done you're out and i went and sent them to a mule because you can now send augmented gear to mules on the same account yeah i think that's an so, important like piece to mention too so anyone who uh, hasn't um, read the past patch notes, just being able to send augmented gear now is phenomenal. <clears throat> and yet, and sometimes you just need, sometimes I just have to be really ruthless and like piece around for surplus to um, requirements now. So onto a slip or over to a mule it goes. And if a situation arises where I need, specifically need that piece of gear, then yeah, I know it's on a mule, so I can just go and hop and just check real quick. Um, oh yeah, there it is. I'll send it back over. Sweet. Um, so um, this next one, I guess, it, I mean, this could be kind of vague, but um, looking at like essential capes for each job, like how many is too many? 
Uh, I guess, or when is it going overboard for you trying to switch up what you can do in your cape? Well, I'd say you're going overboard. Got more than 10 for a job. 10? Like, Ooh. Yeah, 10 <laughs> is going overboard. Yeah. Uh, have I just stumbled into something there? <laughs> oh, I, I just thought I, I thought I was getting crazy by get by having six on uh, on my um, yeah. one of my classes. So yeah. Well, it it ultimately it ultimately depends on depends on what you're playing. It's like my red man eight, eight, and even then, that, yeah, eight is really just knocking on the door there. But that's because I like got tapes for every other conceivable situation whereas monks only got six the average is six so i think i am in the same boat as you oh but six, I'd say when, yeah i think it oh, it damn. really depends on the yeah it really depends on say and it will take a long time to build up i think the job i have which uses the least amount of capes is scholar it only has like two <laughs> because it's just so easy to cap fast cast on scholar yeah okay yeah. well yeah six is a uh, yeah 10 i think you've you've definitely gone overboard but you know i like the i like that six number that makes it uh <laughs> yeah it's like achievable. i'll sometimes i'll sometimes see like the weirdest jobs making like magic of asian capes and like dude your other your other arm like you're not on malignance you don't have the innate magic evasion to really support that. Why are you doing that? <laughs> it's like yep. there's like no point. <laughs> uh, essentially, the same thing as having the you know the uh, meta fast cast cape on your samurai. The, what? What? The, uh, the fast cast cape for samurai. So that way, you're if you ever get stuck going sub ninja, you can get your it's a semis off faster. You know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm uh... building that one. <laughs> Yeah, I would. I've, I've seen that one a few times, and that always makes me laugh. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, shame about yeah, shame about Hasso and Sagan murdering. Yeah. Oh well. How many for most jobs? How many capes would you think would be absolutely necessary? Because like I know, um, I know a lot of jobs can get it. Like they could start with two or three capes and be, you know, fully yeah. functional. But in order to actually like maximize your efficiency. You end up needing like between six and eight capes, like you mentioned earlier. But yeah, I would say I would say six is what you should use. You should, you should have a TP one. Thing is, a TP cape should be able to. Well, generally speaking, it should be like Dex, accuracy, attack, um, store TP, or double attack, depending on the job you're on. That that stat is really interchangeable and PDT mm -hmm. because because capping MDT with shell and shell refive is actually pretty easy. Yep. Um, I would say beyond that, you need a cape for your primary weapon skill. Hopefully it shares attributes and stats with other weapon skills. If not, you'll generally need like a strength, multi-attack, accuracy attack, one for multi-hit weapon skills. Let's just say resolution as an example. Then you would need a strength WSD one for something like Tall Cleaver. I'm just going off Dark Knight here as an example, because your Tall Cleaver cape would also work on... Um, cross reaper and whatnot so yeah i do and then you and then and then, and then you need a d but then again your tp cape could technically be a dt one absolutely oh shit i don't want to die then you might as well get like the um moonlight cape on for dt and hp like i just cannot die at this moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't forget about your agility cape for ninja um oh. <laughs> too soon too soon man uh, <laughs> so okay, I think that I think we uh, we've answered that one. Um, so one more question before we kind of wrap up here, and uh, this is also going to be the kind of question of the week. So for anyone listening, um, hop onto the Discord and, and give us your uh, your answer as well. But um, if you could make one, you get one major change to Final Fantasy XI, what would it be? All right, you, if I oh okay. I was to make one major change. Um, oh boy, I would say I would like that. And this is kind of a pipe dream. In 2020, oh sorry, the um, uh, the 20th anniversary, the pipe dream would be it's actually an expansion. I wouldn't hold my breath on that, but 
there's well, like there's like there, there there's like two other continents which which we haven't gone to the southern the southern islands and the north and given given how you could literally make like the northern continent kind of like skyrim well i mean i don't to. i don't it i think it's possible because this um new trust that's available through the what heroism that you have to have like 100 150 like i feel uh, like that's 180 but yeah okay there you go I feel like that's their way of testing a new job. So um, I don't know what you I think about seen, that, but I haven't seen that trust yet. What what's that? What, what's that all about? It's going to be a yeah. chemist. Yeah, it's really? uh, Monro. He's like, uh, I guess from what I've read on him, he's supposed to be like an alchemist or something like that, based on a uh, like the uh, Final Fantasy V job of it. I, I think it was five. It's either five or tactics. I can't remember offhand. But February mm-hmm. is, uh, I think February is the first month where it'd be possible to get it. I think you have to look uh, that up. That might be a good uh, content for be, your videos, but um, it's going to be March, I think. I want to say it's either March or <laughs> April. Would be the first yeah. month. Have they actually said he's going to have some different mechanics to? Um, I I think there was a in that. Once again, I, I you know recording here, I won't be able to pull it up, but you can Google this. A couple months ago, there was this um, Japanese uh, get together where they showed screenshots and talked about the siren content that's coming um, and then talked about that uh, trust a little bit. Um, I can't remember exactly what they said about it, but it'll be something good for you to, to kind of check out. Yeah, chemist. Chemist is actually a really interesting idea. Yeah, I have no idea what they do with it, but um, but yeah. So that's why I say I don't think an expansion may necessarily be outside the realm of possibility. With uh, if this were well, to be also another job, this could be something that ties into the lore in another continent. That's okay. I'll keep this. I'll keep this real. Um, I'll keep this real brief. I could see a place for a job like chemist because chemist would pretty much be like it would incorporate elements of scholar with um kind of like a more healing focused scholar like a legitimate alternative to a mass mass aoe healing as a white mage like you would use like various materials almost like almost almost like a cross between a scholar and a ninja like you wouldn't actually use mp for casting spells you would use materials and yeah, like what you were um, and what you would combine would ultimately produce produce an effect you want yeah no i'm that's like i'm super interested in it and i hope uh that's why I hope it's more than just a trust or, or even the trust. I hope um, they give it those type of mechanics for us to get some insight um, on uh, maybe some things that they have planned. So, But you should definitely try to, uh, uh, and if I find it, I'll message to you, but find that uh, article where they talked about some of the content coming up because I think they mentioned that uh, in that content. Yeah, that's yeah, that would actually be great. I honestly did not know about that. Yeah, yeah. I know for me, like one big thing, if you take away anything content related, and this is a pipe dream as well, but I wish they would do a link shell overhaul. So something that uh, overhauled the um, the community within the actual game and actually gave some actual benefits to uh, in game for, you know, similar to 14, obviously, or any other MMO that has a guild system. Um, but anyways, that's kind of my, my okay. two cents there. <clears throat> so one of the things I'd thought with it, especially if they do decide to bring back like bring back chemist or something from from I guess uh, was in both Final Fantasy V and Tactics, is like for both of those games it was healing through items. So like you could turn your potions into AoEs and stuff like that. But yeah. as a lot of those items have been for the large part useless over the last several years, you know, Almost, almost like if it would turn it into more of like an ammunition-based healing job versus an MP-based healing job, you know? Yeah. An idea I would have for a job like chemist, you know those screen temporary items we get in... Yeah, like terror screen and whatnot in uh, yeah. recent Jima? Maybe you could have a job based around that as, as like one of its... Ooh. One of its can do that. And that's like full-on like full on resistance to ailments. And then you would like be able to mix things and have like, a, like um, like a massive curaga or something that also removes ailments depending on what you've actually used. That's so a good like, idea. You know, idea just like random idea would be like job ability unstable mixture for like a one hour and 
all of your uh, all of the items you use during the insert time limit window, probably 30 seconds, has AOE effect and a slightly to significantly enhanced effect. Mm, sounds like we could make a whole episode I'm, out of this. This is interesting. We yeah, saw. I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll, yeah. we, maybe we've inspired you for a uh, YouTube video. Did, yeah, and, maybe and, in the maybe in the near future. An in-depth analysis of this job that's not out yet and what it could be. Love it. Uh, um, One can dream. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well. Um, Let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, you know, I really appreciate you um, responding back to me almost immediately. I'm glad to have you on the show. Um, you know, I think everyone is going to enjoy, um, you know, your input on a lot of the topics that we went over. Um, and, you know, I really look forward to hopefully having you back uh, on the show and, and continue to, uh, you know, talk outside the the podcast. Oh, uh, oh yeah, absolutely. I think that, well, he... Do you guys run on the West Coast? Eastern. So we run Eastern. in Eastern time, yeah. Okay, yep. then you're, pro you're probably only going to really cross paths with me on the weekend. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's, like, it's like 21 past 5 in the afternoon here, and I can see the um, the uh, pitch black outside there. <laughs> so, yep, <laughs> yep so, yeah. it is uh, full-on uh, nighttime here, so... Um... But yeah, right. sure enough. If I yeah, if I manage to cross paths with you on the uh, on a, a weekend soon to come, then yeah, by all means, we'll just go and sit down and shoot the breeze. Okay, sounds I great. I would uh, I would highly look forward to that. I've just got to be like, if I'm just going to be brief, you know, frank about it. Of all the content creators I watch, like you're the one that seems to be the most down to down to earth one that seems to talk about how to do like ambuscade without having, you know, our, an R15 insert job yeah. here to be able to clear all of it. Mm. You know, nothing yeah, against, I, you know, nothing against uh, Ejen, who a lot of his stuff is kind of done that. But, like, it's it's nice to be able to be like, well, if you don't have all of this other swoopy-doopy gear, you know, you can mm. still be able to go and here's a borderline foolproof strategy to go do, you know, like the Goblins this month. Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. One last thing from me. Um, sure. Something that you can also look forward. To. It's probably going to be either at the end, but um, I'm going to be upgrading my uh, hardware, so the um, the uh, FPS problems won't be such an issue going forward. I hope, because <laughs> I know that sometimes it can drop. But I've just had so many, so many, so much going out that. I finally, I finally got myself some leg room so I can finally get myself a new gaming laptop or PC. And Sweet. I've got some good friends in my link shell who make sure I make the right decision. <laughs> I, I was All actually right. just about to um, offer. I'm a nerd by hobby, so like, if you have yep. any questions, feel free to message me on here. Oh, I think I will. It's always good to get second, if not third opinions. Yep. All right. Well, we will wrap that up. Remember, uh, if you are uh, still tuned in here, head to um, www.newdonls.com. Uh, get our Discord link. And, uh, you know, we also want to know uh, what your one major change would be. And we will talk about it on the next episode. Uh, but until then, we'll see you all next time.